And what this means is that we should study human nature objectively without trying to put a moral thumb on either side of the scale. Well, let me start with a fear of inequality. This comes from a simple mathematical fact that zero equals zero. If we're blank slates, we must be equal. But if the mind has any innate organization, then different races, sexes, or individuals could be biologically different, and that would condone discrimination and oppression. Well, I think as soon as you see the fear stated uh, so clearly, you see the flaw in it. Namely, that fairness does not require a belief in sameness. When Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, he did not mean we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are clones. Uh, rather, uh, the, our commitment to political equality is a recognition of certain human interests that we assume to be universal across the species. Uh, as it was written, that people are endowed with certain inalienable rights and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's also a commitment to uh, as a policy prohibiting discrimination against individuals based on the statistics of certain groups that they belong to, such as race, ethnicity, or sex. That is the core of fairness and equality of opportunity, and it has nothing to do with the factual question of whether people are, all people are biologically indistinguishable. Also, there's a downside of denying uh, the possibility of individual differences. Uh, many of the uh, most horrific cases of racial and ethnic persecution in the 20th century, in fact, did not come from uh, targeting groups that were thought to be racially inferior. Um, the problem is that if you believe that uh, all people are indistinguishable, there's a temptation to treat the more successful people not as more talented, but rather as more ruthless or avaricious. And many of the atrocities of the 20th century came from persecuting ethnic groups that provided the circumstances that allowed their more talented members to uh, prosper. Examples include the uh, Indians in East Africa and the South Pacific, the Chinese in Malaysia and Indonesia, the Igbos in Nigeria, and the Jews almost everywhere. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've just started reading your book, so I guess uh, you may have answered this question in the book as I go along and uh, get to the last pages. But how do you respond to the question of adaptability of genes to circumstances in the sense that are genes immutable uh, over a certain period of time because that goes against the whole evolutionary theory itself. So therefore, uh, because uh, the reason I'm asking this is uh, immutable heredity is often used as justification for relative uh, wrongs, like racism, for instance. And it's often used as an argument supporting inequality based on, on, on genetic uh, immutability yes. to circumstance. Well, um, I mean, genes are only immutable in the sense that Lamarck was wrong and that our experiences don't, aren't reverse-coded back to systematic changes in the DNA that then get passed on to future generations. Uh, they're, of course, not immutable in the sense that they're constantly prone to mutation and recombination. Um, but the, um, I believe I addressed your concern in, in the part of the talk in which I discussed uh, inequality, and that is that if someone believes that there are innate differences among individuals that racism is justified, then they've made a horrendous error. Uh, that a commitment uh, um, against racism is not a factual belief that people are indistinguishable. It better not be because people are not indistinguishable and we don't want to say that class prejudice or racism or sexism are justifiable. And the reason that we can have both uh, a, the study of human uh, differences and a commitment to equality is that equality is a policy, not an empirical hypothesis, and it's a policy to recognize rights inherent in all human beings, and it's a policy to treat them as individuals and not to prejudge them by statistics of a particular group that they belong to.